The aim of the video is to model the motion of an automotive vehicle. Later in the video we'll look at modelling two automotive vehicles in close proximity to each other, known as platooning. I'm going to introduce you to the use of the signal build in Simulink and also the saturation block. So the aim is, to, in terms of the system, is to look at automotive vehicle motion and relate throttle position to vehicle velocity. So the forms given by this, where the actuator is some form of power unit that's going to generate a, generate a force that is going to generate the vehicle motion. So in terms of the mathematical model um, of the automotive vehicle, it's a second order, second order ordinary differential equation given by this, where C is the momentum loss due to resistance. Example: air resistance force. F is the force generated by the engine, V is the velocity of the vehicle, and M is the vehicle mass. So if we undertake the Laplace tra transformation and rearrange it, we can rearrange it into the, this transfer function form given here. So the basic form of the model we're interested in is the, known as the phase variable form. And you'll, what you'll see here, the input what we're interested in is the throttle position, so we'll put a unit step input of some form there. We'll use the signal builder that we'll get on to later. I'll get on to later. The output here will be displacement, here velocity, and here acceleration. Hence why we use the phase variable form, because we can get these outputs um, out, i.e. velocity and acceleration. Okay, so the coefficients of the model um, are given here. So the, the, the variable's mass is given by this value, so in kilograms, 1,760. Momentum loss to resistance, acceleration, and deceleration. Force generated by the engine, so this is determined based on mass multiplied by acceleration. We've also got here the max velocity of the vehicle. Okay, so this is the basic configuration. We are going to use, like I said, a signal builder, and we'll also use saturation blocks to limit the maximum velocity and acceleration. Um, so in terms of um, Simulink, simulation, uh, next step is to get into Simulink. <clears throat> so if I open up Simulink, create a new model, go to the library browser, drag and drop the blocks. Alternatively, I can just click on here, and if you know the name names of the blocks, you can just get them that way. So we need two saturation blocks. Um, three game blocks. Some injunction. Sorry, it's called some signal builder. Three two workspaces because we're going to plot displacement velocity and acceleration. Gets really four. Okay, so that's all the blocks. So now um, I'm going to configure it into the form that is needed. And I'll explain a little bit as I go along. Okay, so Control I, move the sum junction. This here is um, C. Put the game block there. Okay. Rather than divide all the coefficients through, we can just put one over M in here. It'll do the same thing. Yeah, F. Because what we're going to do is we're going to effectively apply force to this here that's um, created via the power unit. Signal Builder. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to get that after the 
add saturation, saturation block. Okay. So if you're looking at this, then you can double click on these and rename. So we'll call that Excel 1. We'll call this velocity 1. And we'll call this displacement 1. Okay. We'll first of all go into the signal builder and create the input into the signal. So we'll double click on the signal builder. Okay, the first step I want to do is to increase the time range because you see at the moment default is 10 seconds. I want to change this to 50 seconds. Okay, next step then I want to create a new signal. So I'll go new. Or signal new and then square and put a square up, signal. So this will pop up. The only thing we need to worry about at the moment is just this frequency hertz. So what I'm going to put in here is 0 0.05. Okay. And it will give me that. So you can see the frequency that I selected corresponds to this. And you can see if you remember 50% duty cycle. So it's effectively on for 50% of the time and off for 50% of the time. What I can do if I want to get rid of the signal now because I'm not going to use this, I can just right click and go delete. <clears throat> okay, and what I can do here is effectively play around, well move the lines and create a signal or an input that is useful for me. So what I'm going to do is effectively apply <coughs> the unit step input at five seconds. And then turn it off or remove it, I should say, at 30 seconds. So what this effectively corresponds to is the position on the throttle on the vehicle being fully applied and then being fully removed. Or you could say, um, yeah, being fully removed, i.e. you could say deceleration of the vehicle. Okay, so click save and then, oh, sorry. Maybe you don't need to click save, <clears throat> leave there, okay. Connect up the block. I might do that because it was all red originally connected to the other block. Okay, so that effectively there is my Simulink diagram. So we're going to MATLAB. So I'm just changing that because I denoted it C in the Simulink script. So what I've got here is a MATLAB script. So I've got my variables defined here, so mass resistance, simulation time. Okay, I haven't defined that as Simulink, so I'll just go back to Simulink um, here. Define that as T. Okay, and T is gonna equal 50 because I, I um, set the input to 50 seconds, the duration of it. And then what I've got here is the upper and lower limits in terms of the saturation okay so you can see velocity upper velocity lower velocity upper sorry acceleration upper acceleration lower so what i need to do is if i just move that to the side i need to go into simulink and effectively if i click so this one here is going to relate to acceleration so double click on that the upper limit I need to change to 0 0.1. Oh, actually no, so I need to change to Excel upper because then it enables us to then define what the values are within Simulink. Okay, so acceleration upper. You'll also have to go into this signal attributes and just go there, output maximum, lower. So we've got output minimum. Okay, so that's one of the blocks done. And if I click on here, this one's going to correspond to velocity. So if we go velocity upper, 
You could just put zero in it. Oh, sorry. Velocity. You could just put zero in here, but I'll define it anyways. I'll define it anyway to keep consistent. So, velocity um, lower. <coughs> velocity upper. Okay, so velocity lower, minimum, velocity upper, maximum. Upper limit, velocity upper, lower limit. I think that's correct. Okay, so I've done that. I've worked out it, um, here forces mass times acceleration upper. Simulation, so sim single vehicle. So I need to make sure that I save this um, file within the same location as the MATLAB script as that name. So it's there. So I'll save this as single vehicle. Okay, so be careful of that. So I'll have to make sure that I just I've got a file that's saved or open that's already called that. Okay, let me try again. <clears throat> okay, second time lucky. <clears throat> okay, so now usual figure one, I'm going to plot displacement again, well, time against displacement, put my XY labels on, I'm going to plot velocity versus time, and I'm also going to plot acceleration versus time. So, one last thing. I need to do, I think I've forgotten to do, is just double click in these and change these to array, 2D array. So it's a normal method, a uh, normal setup for extracting the data in the format that we need. Okay, always make sure you click here, save, after every time you do something. And now, fingers crossed this runs change folder okay okay and what you'll get is here two figures um, outputted so displacement against time so that's effectively there the displacement of the vehicle so you can see after 50 seconds it's around a mile just over a mile and then in terms of the other outputs here You've got velocity, so you can see the vehicle there, the velocity is being um, applied because obviously you put a step into the system. And then approximately this time, the step is removed. And if you look at acceleration, you can see here you've got sharp acceleration. And you can see obviously how it, the deceleration, sorry, the acceleration decreases because obviously as you're re reaching maximum velocity. Because so remember the maximum velocity was 35 meters a second. Okay, so you're pretty much at the fine, at the maximum velocity there as we wanted to do we wanted to relate the throttle position to the velocity and then you'll see here in terms of that and then at this point here at 30 seconds if you remember we effectively removed the step so you can see the vehicle decelerating okay so that's pretty much um going through the stages of one vehicle so say now, for example, we wanted to go through the steps of, well, the process now of modeling two vehicles effectively running close together in pl platooning routine. So what I'm gonna do is be as quick as possible. We're just gonna copy all that, paste it, move it beneath here. What I'm going to do actually to be removed so it doesn't save over, I'm just going to save this file in here. So if I go to the MATLAB script, I'll just see what I called it. Ooh, there's a lot doing that. Let me just cancel that. I'll go here and I'll see what I called it in the script. So for two vehicles, I called it two vehicles, so I'm just going to copy that. I'm just going to change that just to be consistent with the model. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just going to save this now as two vehicle. So video two vehicles, two vehicles. Oh, sorry, again, same mistake again. Let me just close the two vehicle model. And let me just try and save that again. Oh, sorry, in the wrong location. Let me do that again. We'll get there in the end. New two vehicles. Oh, sorry, that's not the right one. It's video two vehicles. <clears throat> okay. What I'm going to do is just rename these to, I'm just going to put a two at the end, because this is what I've defined them as in the um, script. We're going to use all the same properties in terms of um, what values we put into the saturation in terms of the maximum deceleration, acceleration, and the maximum velocity of the vehicle. Um, so effectively, it's two identical vehicles. The only difference we're going to do is we're going to generate a new signal that's going to be fed into here. So I'll show you how to do that. So double click on the signal builder. Um, what we want to do is go signal new, signal new, oh, signal. Okay, it's not as easy as it looks. Signal new square. We'll select 0 0.05, so the same frequency we select originally. And what I'm going to do is construct pretty much the same signal, but I'm going to put a one second offset on the model. So you can see this one applies a step at five seconds. This one I've applied it at six seconds. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is just again, I'm going to put this at 31 seconds. So it effectively applies a step a second late and removes it a second later. Close that. And now I've got our two signals. What I want to do is just effectively connect that signal up to here. Okay, there's your two models. So it's applying those two unit steps to the different two different models. So now if I go to Simulink, um, what I've got here, you can see exactly the same variables, okay, because of two identical vehicles. I'm simulating obviously the two vehicle simulating scripts now. <clears throat> what I'm doing, so figure one, again, we're going to look at displacement. What I've got is displacement here of effectively a vehicle one. So I'm plotting out dot tl, comma, out dot displacement one. Hold on, because I want to plot displacement two on top of that, so I can compare the two vehicles. Um, and then usual commands. Put this command on here, so this legend, so I can identify between vehicle one and vehicle two. And just put a heading to that legend, just call it legend. And pretty much the, the other graphs, so velocity, acceleration, um, follow the pattern. Okay, but this one though, it's got figure two, uh, like, like actually the previous one, and then the subplot. And then effectively, yeah, just plotting the two velocities on top of each other. So now if I click the run button, what you'll get out is the graphical output. So if I go to figure one, what you'll see here is vehicle one and vehicle two labeled on the legend. So vehicle one, as on the pre, the first kind of output, um, sorry, the first simulation we did, and then vehicle two that you'll see is following it approximately a second behind. So if we look at velocity and acceleration, you'll see that the trend follows from, again, the first simulation with the delay between the two vehicles, or I should say the separation, not delay, of approximately one second. So that concludes the video.